Chapter 4's ARG just got a big update revealing a ton of new lore documents that change everything about the way the game works, including the full Bigger Bodies initiative solved, multiple new monsters revealed, a ton of other new characters updates, and a bunch of other stuff you definitely don't want to miss. So for a while now, we've been waiting for some updates on the Chapter 4 ARG ever since we got a new trailer and overall haven't heard much from the developers. That is until recently out of nowhere, the Playtime Code Discord account in the Poppy Playtime server, which has frequently messaged us clues for the ARG in past updates, randomly came back and returned saying, please excuse the silence, needed to relocate, we have an important message, it's too dangerous to share over this channel, we will try another way, before returning a few minutes later saying, message delivered, can't say specifics, but we are making noise, and this last message here gives us an idea on what to do next, as when going back over into the famous ARG website, specifically on the CCTV camera section, we have notably in the past used the audio in the CCTVs to find all sorts of other puzzles and clues before, so it wouldn't take long for people to notice that suddenly the audios on the CCTVs would change, making some new interesting noises on one of the cams. It sounds like some kinds of drums or taps, which made people quickly realize that this may be some kind of tap code, which is an encryption method where we are given a graph of the alphabet in a 5x5 format, and somebody can tap a certain number of times to equate to a letter on the graph. For instance, if I wanted to say a high via tap code, first I would tap twice, then three times to spell H, then tap twice again, and tap four more times to get I. And when when doing this with all of the taps on the cameras, it spells out the phrase, find Sawyer evidence zip, seeming to be referencing Harley Sawyer. And when going back to the terminal and typing recover, a command we've used in previous ARGs to download hidden files, we are again brought to a password locked website. However, now when using the tap code message and typing the password Sawyer evidence dot zip, the password works and the computer downloads downloads three variations of files under the same names that hide some big secrets. But before we get any deeper, today I can officially announce I have just released my very first merch drop finally, which I've been working on for months on SheepRampage.com. The drop is themed around like a mock vintage cinema poster in a cool rubber hose style, but instead of course the show is named after my channel name Sheep Rampage, and has a bunch of sheep in a stampede with a little hungry fox who'd be the enemy of the show. And the drop actually includes two shirts. One is a white one that is of the fully colored design and is a little more vibrant, while the second one is in a more retro color way, coming in a brown design on a black print, which fits the fall vibes. The shirts are super comfortable. The design was done by artist Mewi, who absolutely killed it. And if you guys want one of your own, they are available now at SheepRampage.com or on the link in the description. And don't wait, because if you guys order before Halloween ends on the 31st using code Halloween20, you can get 20% off and the shirts will go away completely forever on November 30th. So don't wait and miss it at SheepRampage.com. Shout out to everybody who picks it up, but back to the video. So when opening all of the files from the terminal, it reveals what looks like some kind of images that are completely scrambled up and don't really say much. However, you might have already been able to spot that the images appear to be split up into little scrambled up grids, which to make a long, long, long story short, can be rotated around a bit using photos. Photoshop or some other editing software, and after a little bit of mixing and mashing, we are able to create three brand new teasers, showing on each what appears to be a bunch of documents all shredded up and thrown around the desk from different angles. Now, you're probably wondering, how are we going to fix up these destroyed documents? And the answer is as simple as going through every single image, picking out dozens upon dozens of little pieces, and building them all together individually to try and make some kind of full document. Now, I'm not joking when I say this puzzle is extremely difficult to solve. I recently spent three hours on stream trying to do this and was only able to fully solve one of them. So after hours upon hours of me and other fans trying to uncover the documents, we couldn't even find all of them yet. But so far, we have been able to uncover six separate documents that reveal a bunch of things. The first one here shows an incident report labeled as 
Confidential, taking place at some point in 1993 with the employee name Brendan something in the tourism department, likely being the people involved with the Playtime Co. tours, assuming this is correct. And the incident details read, it's a bit hard to remember everything that happened. It's like my mind is all jumbled up when I think about it. Like I can't think about it without being there again in that moment. Still, I'll try to write everything I remember. I guided my appointed blank. We made our way redacted above we usually have a blank. The group was big. I think those at the back dragged behind. Halfway across, I heard redacted screaming, then every blank. He redacted, the minds redacted, but I tried also redacted. I don't think anyone heard me, and nobody heard anything over the alarms. The whole thing couldn't have lasted more than a minute or two. Incident causes, bad safety equipment, bad parenting, stupid kid. Notes, please, 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 whatever happens, you can't let all this come back on me. Whatever you want from me, take it. Just don't tell anyone it was me. I'm just a kid, man. I have a future in everything, and I can't have this hang over me. Tell the parents, tell the news, tell everyone it wasn't my fault. So in this, while we don't see the whole thing, a large part of it is redacted, we hear about what appears to be an incident with someone named Brendan having something happen during a tour involving a child, which he panically blamed on the child, the parents, and possibly faulty safety equipment. And judged from the panic of the employee who begged for people to not give them fault, along with all of the reported alarm sounds, it sounds like there was some kind of serious accident involving a child getting injured or worse, and Brendan was worried about this ruining the trajectory of his life. This incident is something we've never seen before anywhere in the game, but clearly it's going to be important to the chapter. I don't even know what it could have actually been. So I'm very confident that in chapter four, we'll learn more about what happened to this kid, especially since they seem to mention mines here, and we know there are caves in chapter four, so something could have happened relating to the caves in some way. The next and possibly most interesting document of all of them shows a letter from Leith Pierre to Harley Sawyer reading, Dear Dr. Sawyer, first introductions, my name is Leith Pierre. I'm the head of innovation at the Playtime Co. factory. You are Dr. Harley Sawyer, a neuroscientist with quite a little reputation. Not a major player in your field, no, but someone with ambition and big ideas, somebody looking to get ahead. Now, I know the natural next question. Why is the head of a successful toy business reaching out to little old me? Well, for you, I have the project of a lifetime. It took a little digging, but I know you were once part of Elliot's Young Geniuses program, making you uniquely qualified for what I'm about to ask from you. However, given that a letter is far from the proper place to convey this information, let me extend to you an invitation. January 15th, 1990. Meet me at the Playtime Co. factory. Believe me, you'll know when you see me. This is your way to get ahead, Dr. Sawyer, the opportunity you've been waiting for. I know you'll make the right decision. Sincerely, Leith Pierre, head of innovation. So this document appears to take place in 1990, where we could see that Leith Pierre had taken over for Elliot Ludwig as the factory owner, at least according to himself. And as we saw, Harley Sawyer wasn't a scientist of Playtime Co. or anything at this point. However, he was a prodigy brought up through the Playtime Co. Young Geniuses program, an older program we learned about in some previous ARG updates, presumably held back when Harley was a child, that served to spot out smart children to possibly scout them out for the future. Something we see here when we learn Harley was actually once a child at Playtime Co. and was studied all the way into adulthood, leading up to Leith needing him for a special meeting, likely building up to the start of the Bigger Bodies initiative. And this also finally explains this document from earlier in the ARG, where we see a bunch of scientists and other smart people assessed for some kind of a project before they picked Harley Sawyer, which was likely some list of the young geniuses they scouted out years past, and when needing somebody to help out with experiments, they found Dr. Harley Sawyer. So that is a very interesting twist, and I wonder if we will learn more about this program and his involvement with it in the coming months. Next, we actually get to see some letters from Harley working on a bunch of different experiments that reveal more than I think anybody was expecting. Starting with Experiment 1015, labeled under Special Projects, who was made for Playcare, reading, Our understanding of neural reactivation is in part or whole wrong. Systemic tissue seemed initially promising, but yielded no results. Subject shows blank brain activity of any kind. Another failure.
failure. I've blank innovation blank. After all, we are dealing with a field so new it has no blank. So the first one here is a failed experiment designed for Playcare 1015, which a lot of people have theorized could be referencing the infamous Bobby Bear Hug Bigger Body showcased in the books, which was also supposed to be in Playcare but ended up being a massive failure. Next, we see one for Experiment 1026, also for Playcare, that reads Subject was alive for a total of 45 minutes, of which only three were in anything resembling a conscious state. Upon first signs of awakening, 1026 sat upright as if startled by something. They stared blankly at the other end of the observation room. Of course, assisting staff rushed in, checking the equipment and asking them a variety of questions. 1026 answered none of them, but directed their gaze at whoever was talking and was even able to track a moving object, a staff member's index finger, when prompted. Subject then slowly laid blank and closed their eyes. After a few minutes, blood pressure began falling extremely rapidly and 1026 expired. Attempts to resuscitate were not successful. So this document shows another failure, 1026, also dedicated to Playcare, who we, like the previous one, have never seen in-game and have no idea on really who they are. But while they were deemed to be a failure as well, they did noticeably improve from 1015, who had no reported brain function, while this experiment would respond to commands and despite dying early, held a promise. The next experiment, and most interesting one by far, is Experiment 1160, who has been heavily theorized to be Boxy Boo after they showed up in a previous ARG with the same description as him. And like the rest, he is interestingly tagged for play care reading. No longer must we be tied to the size or blank of our test subjects. 1160 represents an entirely new approach to the project and is proof that blank. He will be the first of this new initiative, first of these bigger bodies. If we continue to improve procedures, there will be another benefit as well. Leith and his money men will be placated, I think that says. They will have their investments and see money saved, and I will be able to continue on my work. Promising, very promising indeed. So for one, this does confirm 1160 is boxy since he was the first bigger body. We already knew that. Even confirming he was originally at least tagged with being in the play care. I don't really know why though. And two, what makes this document interesting is it's the only one tagged for the bigger bodies initiative. All the others are just tagged with their respective experiment numbers and the big breakthrough with boxy seemed to actually be his size being able to make him big and craft him to be larger not limited to the small sizes of the actual toys allowed them to fully realize his potential and survive since they were working with bigger parts unlike the other experiments who we can assume were much smaller and never really made it out alive for that reason also kind of disproving that bobby bear hug theory from earlier this would explain why we see so many dead small toys throughout the factory especially since they only had this breakthrough 1160 experiments in while the bigger bodies seem to stick around forever because they were easier to build and maintain without the limitations of size in this document we also see harley talk about the other financial benefits of using these toys for work which we've seen be true with basically every other bigger body seen in the game thus far then following this we got another document showing a letter that reads if you show up with another ham sandwich with blank wrapped in pita i really might just kill you ha <laughs> blank as seriously as you usually do though i bet you sawyer i think that says a blank show i don't think you were around at the time that blank sweet pickles figures can't have anything sweet or blank in any way point is if you find yourself taking his lunch order at a blank pickles if you want to keep your head on your shoulders blank one bad pickle away from blowing the whole place blank sorry yeah anyway lunch honestly grab me anything blank american cheese and pita i was serious about that blank gotta make some jokes and take some jokes to keep a blank place so this one is super cut off for some reason but the general gist shows someone who worked in a cafeteria likely some kind of playtime co-cafe warning another one about harley sawyer who was specifically super strict about his pickles during his lunch order this one is a little bit sillier but i think it's meant to represent how strict harley was and how everyone had to constantly be on their best behavior when the higher ups were around which i find super interesting kind of like all of these documents these are some absolutely massive reveals some of the biggest reveals we've ever had in the game and plus as we said earlier in this 
this video, this isn't even everything. There are still some documents in these bunches of files that haven't been solved yet. Like this weird brain scan looking thing spread about, this news article looking document, and whatever this drawn out diagram is. As I'm recording this, I haven't been able to solve any of them, nor has anyone in the community. So make sure to subscribe to get any updates when these finally end up being solved. And again, also check out the merch in the link in the description if you want to support the channel and like the designs.